Good morning. Welcome to a full day of eating with yours truly. It is just a little after 5.30 in the morning and we are headed off to yoga. So food before yoga this early. I'm, I woke up about 11 minutes ago. I took the fastest shower of my life and I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm gonna have an element packet. As I am doing the yoga, as it is hot yoga and I will be sweating profusely. So I'll have one of these element packets. No, I do not track it. It's 10 calories. If the 10 calories ruin my fat loss, I've got more problems than not tracking this element packet. So slam this coffee, get on our way to uh, yoga and uh, talk to you guys after. All right. We are back from yoga and we stopped at Sweetwater, which is a coffee shop here to get some cold brew uh, following the yoga class. And now my diet has consisted of hot coffee, water, a lot of electrolytes, more water, and now back to coffee. But we're actually gonna have some substance and have a Nash bar. I'm looking for a peanut butter chocolate chip. Um, this is probably my second favorite. The double chocolate chunk is my number one and gonna hop into some work and I will catch you guys at breakfast. We are about to have breakfast and this is going to also be my pre-workout meal. So today is action packed. We just had yoga and got into some work and now we're gonna have this, slam this down. And this is a beautiful creation by Sue. These are my breakfast tacos, hash browns, eggs, chicken, peppers, all the good stuff. It's delicious, it's got some crunch and it is filling during this dieting phase. And I set up my chessboard. I have been talking about chess for far too long. And last night I got the itch and got on the chess.com uh, app and started all the lessons, cranked through way too many lessons. I was on there for like two hours last night. It was amazing. And I couldn't tell you a whole lot right this moment, but when I get back into it tonight, I'm going to keep learning and I'm just going to be a chess master, you know, in the next 10 years. Savage. <laughs> then I have my little pile here. I just throw that on there. A little sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, hi, Jumper. My sweatshirt rack. Multi-use row machine. Can do lat rows, can do upper back rear delt focused rows, and it can also serve as a sweatshirt rack, which is what I'm using it for today. And looks like the last couple of sessions. <laughs> I thought we were out of my favorite protein. I was gonna be very, very sad and uh, went digging a little bit, found a fresh bag. So I still get my favorite protein. Now, if you've missed the content where I have shown you all how to have the perfect protein shake, um, I'm gonna give it to you here again. So 
cashew milk, not almond milk, not any other option, just cashew milk. It's basically zero calories, very minimal. Uh, it's 25 calories per serving. And what I like to do is that I will cover the little metal ball up with the cashew milk. And there's no just single scoops around here. It's two scoop minimum with our protein. Who needs less than 50 grams of protein in any sitting? Not me, I'm kidding. One full scoop, two full scoops, fill her up with some cashew milk. I'm notorious as Miguel films me that I generally will overdo the milk, but I think that I nailed it this time. And then some vigorous shaking and we should be, oh, <laughs> make sure that lid snap. I've had that issue before, but we're gonna have this shake and then I'm gonna have a banana. I had full intentions to have a full meal uh, before I went to the barber, but I have a grand total of 19 minutes to drink this, eat the banana, shower real quick so that Micah, my barber, is not roasting me for the next hour as I get my beard and haircut um, about how bad I smell. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll see you guys in the car. Trying to make my way to to your church to see how the you know, shy and quiet Micah works. <laughs> it's crazy because like, I'll see you. Like, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> and be just fine. As soon as you leave, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. <laughs> it's not healthy at all. And I didn't know it wasn't healthy until she told me it wasn't healthy. I'm like, it's not healthy. It's sweet. Yeah. All right, guys. Hi, bro. I appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate coming in. Of course. Always good talking to you guys. <laughs> Bye, right, bro. Enjoy. It's always a good time seeing him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He kills me. He kills me every time I'm here. Um, he's the funniest person. Most self-confident person I've ever met as well. <laughs> yeah. He teaches me self-confidence every time I'm there. It's the fresh haircut you got there, Alex. Yes, sir. I feel amazing. One thing that always makes my day better is getting my haircut, getting my beard trimmed. And now it is time for a full meal. And so we were rushing out the door, we had that shake, and uh, I didn't end up having the banana because honestly I forgot about it. And then by the time we were in the car, I was like, damn, I wanted that banana. <laughs> so we have a sweet and sour chicken. This is my favorite meal. It is very calorically dense, so we just changed the portion sizes. And I think prior to this, it was 90 carb, 16 fat, and like 50 some odd protein. Now it is, I it it's something, but it's less than that. And so I'll be able to have a little bit more food volume because I've been having that meal in uh, my day to day and it's been very delicious, but it is not the most satiating meal. So I'm looking forward to having a little less volume and then being able to spread my volume out across my other meals. Hey buddy, are you hungry? You kiss this back? I don't do kisses. I'm not much of a kisses guy. First bite of the new recipe. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So good. So good. We are rounding third, headed home. The crowd is going wild and I am almost on my way to St. Bart's. Today, I'm going to take you guys into the adjustments and improvements that we made over the eighth and ninth week in our diet. Don't be shy, come on in here and let's take a look. At the conclusion of week eight, Sue saw great strides on the scale. She lost on average 1.6 pounds. 
And on my side of things, I lost 0.9 pounds throughout the end of week eight. As we have talked about throughout the Leaner Together series, this has been more of a body recomposition for Sue. As we look at the physique photos, we're going to see pretty awesome changes, but the scale itself has not seen the greatest downturn. And we've also talked about the amount of body fat that I needed to lose personally was much greater than what Sue was looking to lose. And so at this point in the diet, I have reached kind of my first marker of I'm on the right path. And so at the conclusion of week eight, I had hit the point of having lost 10 pounds of body fat. In week eight, we made some nutritional adjustments for Sue that led to a lot of the success that we've talked about thus far. We implemented a two-day refeed, and in that two-day refeed, we brought her carbohydrates up from 185 to 250, and we maintained her fats at 55 grams and her protein at 150 grams. She saw increases in energy as well as training performance performance and improvements in the quality of her sleep, which thereafter led to her seeing the fat loss that she did throughout the entirety of the week. Following the refeeds, we got more aggressive with the calorie deficit that we had in place. And so what we did was that we left the fats at 55 and left the protein at 150 grams, but we decreased her carbohydrate intake to 165 grams. Sue has maintained that intake throughout week eight and into week nine and is continuing to see great progress. In week eight, Adam also made adjustments to my nutrition. I had a small change within my protein, my carbohydrates, and my fats. And so my protein was at 210 grams. We decreased that to 200 grams. My carbohydrates were at 230 grams, and we brought that down to 220. And then my fats were at 67, and now my fats are at 63. On paper, this adjustment does not sound like a lot, but I assure you, after having been at this intake for two weeks now since the adjustment was made, I feel it. One thing that I teach my clients as we get deeper into a deficit and calories get down and, and hunger is a little bit higher is that I teach to elongate the time in between the meals that you're eating. You can either go that route or you can add more volume to the meals themselves. Now, oftentimes what you experience when increasing the volume of veggies per meal is that you may experience a little bit of greater distension with the increase in overall fiber intake, but you are going to have a feeling of greater satiation. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. And I know that for myself is that that distension is uncomfortable to me and feels a little bit disruptive to my day as after I eat my food, I'm ready to go on to the next thing. I'm ready to get into my work. I'm ready to go and do the next physical activity. And the last thing that I want is for my stomach to be distended or causing me any pain. And so I would prefer to elongate the time in between my meals rather than just adding more volume to the meal to have kind of this false sense of satiation. Sue and I both have increased our overall activity as well. We started riding our bikes. We have a park that's about a mile and a half away and we ride our bikes over there and play basketball, which has been really fun. And <laughs> we'll put in a little clip right here of my incredible wife playing basketball and doing a, I don't know, turned around behind the back granny shot swish. I mean, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> if, if you're looking for basketball lessons, Sue Bush, is accepting new inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> As we moved into week nine, our protocols stayed the same. Around the Bush household, it has been a little chaotic. And so this has been a time in which we just want to get the job done. We're setting the task up and just checking things off the list and doing what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's take a look at the physical changes that we see from the initial photos to the end of week eight. As we compare Sue's photos, the first thing that jumps out at me in the front facing shot is that her delts are getting nice and lean and so she's gaining some shape to her arms. The next thing that I notice is that she's gaining detail through her quads. So she's seeing a little bit more lines and just much tighter through her lower half in general. 
The next thing that I notice is that her midsection is continuing to tighten up as well. These were three areas that when we started the diet were an emphasis for Sue to see progress in. And I'm so happy that at this 75% marker, she's seeing great strides there. And over the conclusion of the next few weeks, she's going to continue to see those strides. Now we all know that the last thing that you ladies want to see be lost in a fat loss phase is the glutes that you have worked so hard to build. When we look at Sue's back shot, this is something that she is very proud of because her glutes were able to stick around because she has built real tissue and has been able to pull the body fat off of her glutes and especially that problematic area under the glutes that many women struggle with to lose body fat from. Now, as we look at my physique photos, week eight was a turning point for me. I say this because I had felt that the fat cells had all the fat sucked out of them, but the fluid was continuing to stay present inside those fat cells. And so my physique photos, to me, continued to look watery. In week eight, this was the point in which I felt as though I lost some of that fluid retention and we started to see a little bit more detail in my physique. One thing I continue to harp on throughout this diet is that I have lost a considerable amount of body fat to my legs. This is not an experience that I have ever had from a fat loss phase. I generally see body fat be pulled from my midsection first, but not this rodeo. And this has been a unique experience for me, but I'm happy with how my legs continue to improve and my stomach is coming around. Give it a little bit more time. I'm also seeing better shape and lines through my delts and through my arms. When I look at my back shot, I'm starting to see fat loss really start to happen through my lower back, which is a problem area for many men as they're working to achieve their goal physique. We'll throw the week nine comparison photos up for you all to see now. This was a week in which I felt as though I made great strides in overall progress. I saw great fat loss through my midsection and felt as though that my physique was coming together in total. This was a week that Sue and I caught a second wind. We realized how close we were to the finish line and felt as though that I had a lot of extra energy to provide. I don't know where it came from, but it felt good to have. And so I'm excited to press on into the latter three weeks of this diet and finishing strong. Your boy is hungry. I'm gonna send you guys off to the diet recap and I'm gonna go get some freaking food. It is 7.22 in the evening and this is my final meal of the day. I am having a mighty fine bowl of ground beef, sweet potato, jasmine rice, and um, some squash. And then I'm having one serving of the lesser evil popcorn. Yes, this is one serving. It blows me away every time uh, that I get this much volume for the, I think it's just 100 calories for this cup of popcorn. So that is awesome. That wraps up. <coughs> oh my gosh, that popcorn. That finishes up my day of eating. Let's see where I ended up. 203 protein, 217 carb, and 64 grams of fat. And so I was just a little bit over on my protein. I was just a little bit under on my carbs and just one gram over on my fat. So I am thrilled with that. Now it is time. Oh, boom, baby, to enjoy this meal. I would love some snacks. I love snacks. Hello? Wolf. Ha. Huh. Got him. Before we get into this, this is a monumentous, monumental, monu big moment because this is the cleanest this house <laughs> has ever been. The outside just got cleaned, the inside. It's freaking clean. Laundry, you might even hear it right now. It's freaking getting cleaned. The dogs, clean. What else am I missing? Is everything clean right now? I've been working my tail off. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> well, you have been doing a freaking lot. You have been getting into a few different types of movement. You had said that you're getting pretty bored of walking. So I think that it has been a good compromise. I didn't even realize you're getting bored of walking. I just know that you and activity, when you start moving, you don't want to stop. What's been the favorite? Some biking, basketball, ruck, 
some swimming? What, what's been, you've been doing so much. I have not swam and I will not swim. <laughs> I barely can swim. I have probably enjoyed basketball the most. I don't know, I've, I've really have been enjoying biking and basketball. The rucks have been okay. I put, here's my issue with the rucks is that I push the boundaries too much and then I do too many days in a row and then I get like a crick in my neck and then I'm like this or I can't turn my neck because the ruck itself has to be positioned perfectly on my shoulders and I fidget with it as I get tired or it's like hitting me in a weird spot on my shoulder and then I start to lift it up or I pull it forward and it puts my shoulders in a weird spot. If you have rucked before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I would say either the basketball or riding the bike. I mean, I'm basically a basketball pro these days. This was the first time I picked up The Rock in probably five, six, seven years, but I picked it up like it was nothing. Easy peasy. I was making trick shots even, just on basically my first try. I have really enjoyed getting back on a bike. It's just such a faster way of transportation than walking, which no duh. But I just like the wind in my hair. It's so nice to be able to just hop on and go somewhere. And uh, I'm working towards going no hands one of these days. I'll get there. I'm still actively working on my ability to turn the corner. The accountability from you as a coach has been incredible. I can't stop repeating it because each week it just remains to be true of it's so helpful to be in this together. Because there are so many days and weeks that I wouldn't be accomplishing what either I wanted to or needed to and either your encouragement or you doing the thing with me has just allowed me to do it and knowing I have that support in you, we're both working towards something together. It's just been I mean, the greatest thing throughout this, especially with as many things that have been on our plate. Uh, I couldn't do this without a teammate. I agree. I think that one thing that many clients run into is that their significant other cannot be supportive of the fat loss or muscle building goals that they have. And it is a strain on their relationship as well as a strain on their mental health. And so by us taking this opportunity to do this together, it has been so helpful for our adherence, but has also been great for our relationship to push one another towards the goals that we both have and working together to get there. And I think an important note because we do work in the same business and work from home and we do a lot together, that doesn't mean that we're always in the same headspace or have the exact same things that need to get done. There's many times where I've already hit my steps and you still have steps to get or vice versa or with training or any of the different aspects that are in play. Or even just the other day, I had a really bad day and you were in a great mood and had a great day and we had to contract those and I think that comes with having communication of hey what are your goals for today what are you trying to uh, achieve have you reached that and still be able to support one another even if we're not doing each and everything together I know one thing that we have in common and that is our excitement for vacation so excited so what are three things that you're going to emphasize over the last three weeks of the leaner together diet the first is sleep because that is the easiest one to go when things get so, so crazy because it just makes the most sense in my head to pull from. Uh, that's just dead time, so I'm gonna take from that. So I'm gonna continue to make sure that sleep is such a priority because I know it regulates everything else. Number two is one that I've struggled with semi throughout this whole dieting phase, and that is finishing my last meal of the day earlier. Again, the days get so insane and it's easy to push off a meal and I always understand why I'm doing it in the moment, but I just end up in a less than advantageous position when I'm eating at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. and trying to be asleep by 9.30. And the third one is making sure that I don't just run myself into the ground with work going into this vacation because that is also very on brand for us. And I do not want to be trying to recover so much from overshooting during that first
first part of vacation that I'm not able to really enjoy it and be present because this is gonna just be such a special trip for us. I will have an emphasis on taking breaks throughout my day and splitting up my work with physical activity, going and shooting the basketball, taking a bike ride, going on walks. It has been a huge help for my productivity as well as having a good plan to get all of my steps and activity in. The second thing is my freaking tan. I can't be going on this vacation pale and then getting toasted on my first day at the beach and then I'm just laying in the room for the rest of the trip because I'm so sunburned. This happened on our honeymoon. I cannot have a repeat on our five year anniversary of the exact same situation where I get totally fried and then I'm just laying in the room in pain. So my tan. And the third thing is making sure that the purple design sells more than the blue one when we drop those band tees on July 19th. If you have no idea what he's referencing, then you need to listen to the Physique Development Podcast, but we are currently in a battle. You guys get to decide actually what happens when one of us wins. Is it a dare or does the other person just have to do something nice, take over a chore? You guys get to decide, but go ahead and buy the blue design because it's super rad and you think that I should win. But July 19th, mark your freaking calendars and teas are coming. I hope you guys enjoyed the full day of eating. The next one that I do for the channel is going to have significantly more calories and I'm not going to be as tired and it's gonna be much more full of all delicious foods. See you guys in the next episode, bye.